Oh no, I, Simon came here to get revenge on this guy. So no, no, he shoots him, shoots him. Hey everybody, it's Trevor DeVal here. Welcome to Me, Myself, and Die. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, if you like the show, hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out. This is episode three, moving into scene five. When last we left Simon of Argistan, he had recently escaped his uh, encounter with the Carpsburg militia, only to meet a bounty hunter who was paid to come after him for perceived crimes in his past, and then falling down a ravine into a river, which he barely escaped, he encountered uh, a wounded orc in a, um, a hunter's cabin in the woods. Uh, this orc, whose name was Mord, this orc had recently escaped the prisons of uh, Carpsburg. Prisons, that's a strong word for it. Carpsburg's a tiny little mountain village, so the prisons is probably nothing more than just one single cage. Basically, they put you know, suspected criminals in until they can deal with them. Nonetheless, Mord had escaped, but he had taken a wound and killed a soldier on his way out, and so he's he was convinced that the Carpsburg militia was coming after him. They both decided that they could help each other get revenge on the Carpsburg militia, specifically on Sergeant Garrick, who was a, who was the one responsible for killing Vilborg, Simon's old uh, friend and ally. And so what we're going to do is we are going to pick it up on the evening of a few days later. It's a new moon. There's no stars. It's a very dark night, and Simon and Mord have crept up to the very edge of the village of Carpsburg. Now, what these particular buildings are, I'm not entirely sure. Well, they'll sort of reveal themselves as they go. So, to begin, they are creeping along, and they have kind of scouted the area a little bit. What they're trying to determine is, where is Sergeant Garrick's residence, because really that's what Simon is interested in. He wants to get in and get Sergeant Garrick. He's he's not particularly interested in getting the rest of the militia. They're just soldiers just doing their jobs after all. Uh, Mord, on the other hand, is a bestial orc, and uh, he's a little more savage and bloodthirsty than Simon is. So Simon had a, you know, uh, would have had a conversation with him basically saying, you know, Mord, remember, we are not here to slay innocent people. We are here for Garrick, Sergeant Garrick alone. Brr, Mord will kill anyone in his way. Mord, that is not my way. Now, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this properly. You and I sneak into that town. We find Garrick and we administer justice to him and then we get out without anyone else getting killed. Well, we shall see, human. So we shall see. Now they are here on the edge of Carpsburg on a crisp summer's night. It is a crisp summer's night as opposed to a warm summer's night. Why? Because it's in the mountains and at night in the mountains, things can get a little chilly. It is a crisp summer's night. Mord and Simon have crept up the rock center, now overlooking the village of Carpsburg. They do not yet know where uh, Sergeant Garrick's residence is, or do they? Is it possible that while Mord was healing and recovering from his wounds, that Simon was doing a little reconnaissance work, a little, a little reconnaissance work to just observe the village from afar and try and get a, a, a sense of the lay of the land kind of thing, try and determine where Sergeant Garrick's residence would be. So, you know what? We can quickly expedite this with a roll on the fate chart, I think, rather than going through a bunch of rolls uh, with the Savage World system. That will happen soon enough. Let's ask the fate chart. Did Simon get a chance over the past couple days to suss out the village and get a basic sense of its, uh, its layout. Because remember, he's never actually been there before. That was Vilborg who went in, not uh, Simon. And if so, was he able to determine the residence of, of uh, Garrick? Here's what I do. I'm going to do a stealth roll for Simon. The better he does uh, on his stealth roll, the easier it's going to be on this chart. Let's do that. Though. Yeah, 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 that'll be cool. That'll be awesome. He's rolling a d8 for his stealth and seven. So that's a success. It's not a success with a raise. So instead of 50-50, which is what I was going to make it, I'm going to make it somewhat likely. Chaos factor five. We go in here. Gives us a 65% chance. 50. So yes, he was able to suss out the area and he was able to determine that one of these buildings was in fact Garrick's residence. Well, this is sort of the largest building over here, this one. So I'm going to assume that that is in fact the one. Uh, I'm going to call this very likely. Is this building Sergeant Garrick's residence? Extreme yes. So uh, 
Simon was able to see Sergeant Garrick coming out over the course of the day, talking to his men, talking to the soldiers of Carpsburg, uh, giving orders, that kind of stuff. Also interacting with some of the merchants and taking back basically his shopping, taking back his shopping to his uh, to his home, which is most definitely there. So if we have a look over here, we can see that this is a bit of a farmstead uh, with the main door being actually way over here by the tavern. So they creep up the rocks and their goal is to get in to Sergeant Garrick's house and infiltrate it without being seen. They begin to slowly make their way down the rocks, creeping as quietly as they can go, ducking over this low wall and stalking up to these barrels. Is there anybody around? Well, actually, let's do a perception first. Let's do a notice roll. So Simon's notice is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible. Does he see anything in the street? Oh my God, look at that, a six and a four. He's exploding, he's exploding. Uh, oh, a four, so that's eight, uh, nine, 10, 11. 11, that's a success with a raise, almost two raises. So Simon will definitely see somebody if there's somebody there. Is there somebody there? I have no idea. So it's late at night, so there's probably not anybody out because it's late at night, they're coming They're coming into the, the town at this hour for a particular reason, they don't want to be spotted. So I think it's going to be unlikely that there's somebody else, but there might be, right? Unlikely. 100. Ooh, wow. Well, obviously that's extreme no. Extreme no. There's nobody out here at all. Nobody around. Okay. They creep up. They creep up to the, uh, the, the, the barrels here and they look around and they can see nothing. There is nothing going on. The town is eerily quiet. In fact, there aren't even any lights on in the tavern. There's no lights on in this house. There's not even any lights on in Sergeant Garrick's place. This is extremely weird. And now Mord turns to Simon and says, tell me, human. Isn't it normal for your kind who cannot see in the dark to keep lights on in their homes? Yes, there are no lights on in any of these buildings. That is most unusual. We must investigate further. So they begin to sneak their way, being very, very cautious. Here, up to here, up to the edge of the, uh, the cistern. Simon is is a little, little, a uh, little freaked out by this whole development. He's going to, again, sneak up to the window, and he peers inside. There's no lights on, so he can't see anything. But, and there's no starlight. There's no moonlight, so he really, really can't see anything. Is the window latched? I think that's probably very likely. I'm gonna roll on this. Twenty-one. Yes. So the window is latched. So he he tries to open the window, but it is latched. He looks around here at uh, the rest of the square. Still nobody around. I need to know what this is all about because this is very strange. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to basically roll a random event. Okay. And we're going to determine what the source or what the cause of this whole weirdness is. So I'm going to roll on my event focus table and we get 62, which is PC negative. Something bad happens to Simon. And abuse, 100, abuse information. Something has happened. I think this whole town is under some sort of spell. I think something has happened and the something is in Garrick's house and abusive information. <laughs> Simon turns, motions to Mort, and Simon makes his way all the way around here to the door. Mord follows. Is the door locked? Probably likely. Still Chaos Factor 5 here. Yes, the door is locked. Are any of the windows around the house open? I'm going to say probably unlikely for this. Uh, 22. Oh, yes. Uh, so one of the windows is in fact open. I'm just going to determine it randomly. We know that one's latched, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll just roll a d8 and determine which one it is. Six, it's this one. So they go around, the door is locked there. They go all the way around, they hop the fence here. They open the window and pop inside. 
Good talk. Now, what is inside? Here's where we can go to our handy dandy Perilous Wilds book, because uh, this is great for like random stuff. I'm going to roll on the danger table here, and the danger table is splits it up into all different kinds of things. So, let's roll a d12 and see what comes up on the danger table on page 48 of Perilous Wilds. It is a creature. Okay, and what kind of creature? What kind of creature is responsible for casting a spell uh, over the entire town? This is really weird. Is it a, it's a three, so it is a beast of some sort. Oh, some sort of like centipede. Some sort of weird ass centipede. Activity, exploring. This, this big giant weird quasi magic centipede thing is exploring, which leads me to believe that there is in fact a big hole in the ground where this thing is burrowed up from underneath. That's probably the source of where all this, this weirdness has come. Ooh, this is weird. Weird, 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 and cool. Disposition of the beast. Attacking, well that makes sense. <laughs> We're about to have a fight. <laughs> what else have we got here? Number appearing in size. Okay, so there's a group of these things and there's gonna be six of them in total, okay? We don't know if we're gonna encounter six of them, but there are six of them in total. And finally, their size, they're medium-sized. So they're basically the size of a man. That's creepy. These, these giant centipede-looking man-sized things with some kind of ability, we're presuming it's some sort of sleep. So there's two things I'm thinking about these six sort of man-sized centipede things. One is that they have the power to em emit some sort of like sleep gas, which can take out large groups of people. Or the other option is, the six of them have sort of split up and are in each of these places and have, uh, actually I think it's a combination of both. I think that, I think that its power is, is some sort of like, uh, it can like blah, emit this sleep venom gas stuff that causes people to, to go out and then they be, they eat them. <laughs> it's pretty gross. This is bad. So there's a big giant hole in the floor when Simon and uh, Mord come creeping in. These creatures, these centipedes are gonna have like uh, big claws and pincers and things like this, they're gonna be pretty brutal. But they also have the ability to emit the sleep gas as well. So I'm just gonna quickly stat these guys up. I'm just making this up as I go, based on my knowledge of Savage Worlds and based on my knowledge of uh, what we've determined from the uh, Perilous Wilds uh, supplement. So yes, yeah, Simon and Mord have snuck around the house, have found an open window and have snuck inside. They they've see, as they crawl inside the window, they see there, they see there's a big, a big hole in the ground right there. And they're like, what? And they hear this hideous, like chittering, this chittering and munching sound. So here's a question. As they move forward, <laughs> have these things killed Sergeant Garrick? That's the question that I'm interested in. I'm gonna say it's very unlikely because he's pretty tough. 79, the answer is no. So they have not killed Sergeant Garrick. Uh, but the thing is attacking, so I think it's very obvious that they come in and they hear the sounds of combat as Sergeant Garrick is battling with this thing from just the other side of the room. They leap over the, uh, they leap over the hole and as they run around the side to see what's going on, there they can see Sergeant Garrick and he is locked in combat with some hideous centipede thing. Uh, are there more than one here? Uh, that's likely, there are six of them. Five, Kairos Factor, 43. Yes, there are more than one. He is locked in combat. Another one is sort of on the bed right there with him. He is fighting away, fighting away. At this point, they burst in, uh, Simon grabs his bow, knocks an arrow, and, and, and draws it towards it. More, and I think, puts a hand on his shoulder and says, No, let them, let them take him. Let them take him. Oh, that's a, that's a tempting, it's a tempting offer that Maud makes to let these creatures take Sergeant Garrick. So, Simon is cautious. This is a flaw of his. Uh, cautious in this case, uh, does, is he going to allow his cautious nature to affect him and basically walk out of here thinking that his enemy is about to be eaten by these hideous creatures. If, if he was to allow this cautious nature to basically rob him of his vengeance, then I would give him an extra penny. But um, he's not gonna do that. He's gonna overcome his cautious nature because he can't let, he, <laughs> he can't let this guy, murderer of his friend as he is, he can't let this guy be eaten by these, these monsters, by these creatures. He is going to open up 
For this fight alone, uh, Sergeant Garrick is going to be on the same initiative as Simon and Mord. Interesting development. Did not see this coming. So we're going to roll initiative. Roll initiative. Listen to me. Like it's D&D &D or something. No, it's not D&D. &D. It's Savage Wilds where we use the cards. Simon is going to be on the queen, the queen, and the creatures are going to be on the four. That is excellent, excellent and good, and it is right. Let's deal with, uh, let's deal with um, Sergeant Garrick. Yes, so he's really good. He's got a D10 fighting and he's got, in this case, he's not using his ax, he's using a long sword. He is a wild card as well, so he gets his D6. He's gonna attack the closest one to me, the one on the bed. He is going to hit, bang, and he's going to do 2d8 against their toughness of seven. And he roll, oh my God, uh, 14, 19 versus toughness of seven. He splats it, brings his long sword down and bug guts <laughs> spatter across the room like, like so much green paste, <laughs> gross. Simon draws back. Now here's the thing, he is firing into melee. So there's a chance he could hit Garrick. Hey, he doesn't really care though, cause Garrick, he's gonna kill him anyway. So he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna fire. So if he rolls a one on the shooting die, he's gonna hit Garrick instead. The shooting die is the eight. Oh, haha, <laughs> almost. He misses, unfortunately. Mord leaps in, drawing his dagger. Did we determine that Mord had a dagger? I can't remember if we did or not, but we should have. <laughs> because I, it, it's a foregone conclusion uh, that Simon would have given Mord uh, something to fight with, and the only thing he has that he can spare is Vilborg's dagger, the dagger that Vilborg gave him uh, to remember him by. Mord leaps in with his dagger. Mord has a fighting of, a fighting, he's a fighting of the six he do. Uh, he's not a wild card, so two, he will not hit it. And now it's this thing's turn. I think it's gonna turn and blast the two newcomers with its sleep gas. On a one to two, it does that. And it does. <laughs> from these like sacks underneath its jaw, venom, like from, from two different sacks, two different colors of venom kind of spray together and kind of ignite into this gaseous substance that fills the room entirely. Whoosh. So with sleep gas, uh, basically how this is uh, going to work, eh? how this is uh, going to work, I'm not sure what that uh, voice is supposed to be there. The real, the sleep cloud attack of these creatures, these centipede looking things, uh, is a pretty good weapon, it's a D8. If they get a raise, then the save against it is at minus, <clears throat> excuse me, minus two. Seven, so it's a success, so the everybody except for Garrick has to make a, a vigor save. Let's do Mord first. So he's gonna get four more. He does, so he does not knock himself out. That is great. And the vigor of our good friend, Simon. Simon, as he's choking away. Ah, oh, there we go, the wild like, oh, look at that, double sixes, boom. Six, 12, he succeeds with her, he's perfectly fine. So the gas fills the room. Everyone kind of chokes oh, a bit, but uh, nothing done. Next round, here we are, next round. Pow, that's us, the good guys or the bad guys, again on four. So I'm gonna let Simon go first this time. He is gonna once again, he's gonna fire. This is even more dangerous now because whereas he's firing into a combat with his friend Mord. Well, his friend, is he really a friend? I guess we'll find out. I'm not entirely certain if he is a friend, it's hard to tell. Anyway, so he fires at Mord. At Mord, what am I saying? <laughs> he fires at the centipede, ah! He's rolling D8 and D6 and he wants four more, he does it! But not with anything special, it's 2D6 damage versus the thing's toughness of seven. So he rolls six, nothing done. Glances off the carapace arm. That brings us to Garrick. Garrick with his massive uh, sword. Uh, Garrick with his massive sword swing. Bada, bada, bada. Pow, he's gonna do 2d8 damage against the toughness of seven and he is going to do seven on seven, which will shake this thing like that. Leaving Mord the chance to leap in and attack the thing. And he completely misses. With the, the knife just not, cannot uh, get past the armor of this hideous centipede type creature. Here's a question now, there's been a couple of rounds, one of them is dead. Does another one come up behind them from the uh, the hole? I mean, these we we have determined there's six of them, so there's going to be at least one in each of these buildings. So that leaves one unaccounted for. Let's call it somewhat likely that that actually happens. Somewhat likely, eighty-eight. Uh, no, it does not. Okay, so the other one is definitely not around. That's good for our heroes. Our heroes. They might be meat sacks. They might be dead bodies by the end of this. It's it's go. 
so it's got to get out of Shaken, so it's going to do a Spirit Roll, which is a d6, and it's got to get out of Shaken. It does not get out of Shaken. That's good, because the new round is coming up. Boom, pow, our guys are on seven, it's on five. This is really good. So, Simon once again fires his bow. Come on, Simon, hit something for once, would you, pal? Hit something for once. Yeah, there we go. Six of two is eight. That is a hit with the raise, which means he's going to do 3d6 damage. That arrow cracks into the carapace of this thing. Gonna do five, eight, nine against toughness. Uh, it's already shaken. So it takes a wounded because it's an extra. Boom, he slays it just like that. So this thing, this thing be dead. This bug be dead. Now, here's the interesting thing. Garrick looks up, he sees Mord, he sees the ranger. It's confusing, it's late at night. I think there's a very good chance he knows exactly who these people are. I'm gonna call it near sure thing. But it is dark, it's dark in the room. Uh, well, we'll make it very likely. Does he know who these two are? Does he recognize them? The answer is 32. Yes, he does. So he knows, he recognizes them. He stops, he puts his sword up, he says, Wait a minute, I know you. You, Orc, you were the one that escaped our clutches only a few days ago, and you, you, woodsman, you tried to rescue the half-orc that we were legally going to execute. Simon is furious by this. You murdered an innocent man. Whatever you accuse him of, he did not do it. There's no time for this right now. These creatures have attacked this village. And I know that there are other creatures about in the other buildings. Now step aside. I'm going to go stop them and then I'll deal with you. Mord says, mm, very well, human, we will help you. But as Garrick pushes past him, does Mord stab him in the back? Fate chart. Uh, he's, he's a pretty hateful dude. He is a pretty hateful dude and he, he is here to get vengeance after all. I'm gonna say it's likely that Mord attacks him in the back. Yes, he does. Does Simon see it in time? Notice. Oh, Simon, your notice sucks. D4, does he notice this in time? Oh, look at that, look at that. A six and a four, he's definitely gonna see it. Like a god, he sees it with seven. It's, not, it's actually not a raise, it's not a raise. He just does see it before time. He, oh. <laughs> so here's the thing. He moves past him. Garrick moves past Mord. Mord makes eye contact with uh, Simon and then puts the knife up to stab Garrick in the back. Does Simon stop him? He is here for vengeance and this guy killed his friend in cold blood. Does he take this moment to ambush this guy and kill him? Ooh, you know? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he would do. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna leave it up to the fate chart. Does Simon indulge his, his vengeance on Garrick, the guy who murdered his friend, right now when he has the opportunity? Does he let him go by and then attack with Mord? I think it's unlikely. Simon's not that kind of guy. It was likely for Mord. I don't think it's likely for Simon. 83. No, he does not. So Garrick moves past him. Mord moves up to try and, like, stab him in the back. And Simon says, no, Mord, no! Garrick spins around and sees Mord with his his knife up like this. I mean, come on. If you saw that happening, wouldn't you immediately attack the guy that just burst into your house? <laughs> it's a sure thing. Does he attack Mord and is the fight back on? 81, yes he does. We go back into combat now. Okie dokie. We still haven't rolled any doubles, which is interesting because when you roll doubles uh, of your chaos factor digit or under, you get an automatic random event, but that hasn't happened yet. I'm kind of waiting for that to happen because that that's when things really get crazy, when all kinds of wrenches get thrown in the works, but hasn't happened yet, so we'll see what goes on soon. All right, so uh, now it's a battle. Simon, oh, Simon's quick, so he's on 10. And Garrick, oh no, Garrick is first. Well, ooh, this could be the end of Mord. 
<laughs> Garrick, huh, he spins around. Now, Garrick is not in his armor. That's the crucial thing. Garrick is not in his armor. He wouldn't have had a chance. He, he, he basically got a chance to grab his sword. He attacks first, so he spins and stabs at Mord. He's gonna get five or more. Oh yeah, no, no problem, he hits. Uh, with a raise, as a matter of fact. Pow! 2d8 plus d6 is the damage he's gonna do. Uh, 11, oh no. Mord is an extra, which means that he goes down. Is he dead? We don't know, but he definitely goes down. Oh! We're not sure what his status is yet right now. It is up to Simon. He steps back, sort of leaps up on this table, ha, leaps backwards and fires as he does. Oh no, here's the thing. Does he try and talk sense to this guy? Oh, you know what? This, this dude has just killed two of his friends. He's killed Vilborg and now he's killed Mord. No, Mord was asking for it. Let's face it, Mord was asking for it, but... Oh no, I, Simon came here to get revenge on this guy. So no, no, he shoots him. Shoots him! Come on, buddy! Shoot him! Yay! Exploding six, seven. So he hits normal hit, 2d6 damage. And he, oh, guys, nothing at all. The arrow basically just <laughs> ricochets off of his rippling muscles. Ting! <laughs> Terrible. We go to new round. Simon can't win this fight. Garrick is way too good. Simon might have to run again. Initiative time. Joker for Simon, yes! And two, <laughs> two for Garrick. Okay, Joker's great because in Savage Worlds, Joker means that you act pretty much whenever you want. You get plus two to everything you do, which is very, very, very necessary right at this moment. So Simon is going to, again, leap off the table, ah, onto, the, onto the chair, just because it's cool. Ah, firing as he goes. <laughs> I really wish that I would have taken some combat edges for Simon right now. Combat edges would have been good, because combat edges now could could really put that sucker Garrick down, but he didn't take it. <laughs> he fires with a plus two. Plus two shooting is an eight. That's a hit with a raise. I will take it. Hit with a raise is basically three to six damage against this guy's toughness of six. Come on, exploders. Exploders. Uh, we have nine against six. We'll shake him. Uh, it will shake him. My question now is, <clears throat> as the GM, would I have Garrick spend a Benny? He does have two Bennies. He is a wild card. If he spends a Benny, he can do it anytime he wants. He can get rid of that shaken. One to three, he does. He does not. He does not. He's not going to spend that Benny. Whew. <laughs> okay. Because you spend the Benny and just shake is gone. Shake is gone like it never happened. So he does shake. He does shake Garrick, which is great. Oh, we did plus two damage. Uh, right. I forgot about that. Uh, so actually, that's shaken and a wound. Ugh! In that case, he is gonna spend a Benny to try and soak, because he doesn't want to be wounded. Forgot about the plus two damage from the Joker. So, but that, that does push him over the edge into uh, a wound. He's gonna roll a vigor, spend a Benny and roll a vigor check to soak the wound. He does it once, so he does not take the wound, but he is Still shaken. It's his turn now. Garrick has been shaken, but he uh, has combat reflexes, which allows him plus two in a spirit roll. And he's a wild card, so he's gonna get plus two to this. I'm sure he's gonna, oh, seven. It's not with the raise, so it takes his whole round to get up, which is fine. We go back now to initiative. Oh, uh, but I've dealt the Joker, so I have to reshuffle the deck. <clears throat> That's how it works here with Savage Worlds. Where's my ankles, I wonder? It's really hard for me to see. I don't have a crew, you know. It's just me, myself, and die. <laughs> yeah, right there, uh, little shuffle. Little shuffle of the dick. New round, initiative. Simon gets an ace, and Garrick gets an ace. In descending order, hearts go before clubs. Woo! Simon, he, he's shaking this guy, but he can't really hurt him. He's gonna try again. He's gonna try and shoot one more time. This time he leaps back and over the hole. Six plus five is 11. That is a hit with a raise. I will take that faux show. 2d6 damage. Give me some exploders. 14, 19 damage against his toughness of six. Wow, so six shakes him, 10, 14, 18th, three wounds, great. Sergeant Garrick takes an arrow ah, right in his left breast. Ah, 
three wounds. He has to spend his last Benny to try and soak this. Oh, exploding eight and four is 12. <laughs> that unbelievable hit hits Garrick, but he just shrugs it off. Oh, and now goes after Simon. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Rawr. He's gonna leap over here. It's, he's, gonna, he's gonna have to leap and attack with the sword. And oh my God, with a 10 and a seven. <laughs> Definitely hits with a raise with his long sword. It's bad for Simon. Oh, six, seven. His toughness of six, so he'll be shaken from that. Garrick comes in, oh, leaps over the hole and slashes a Simon, cuts him across the neck. Blah! Doesn't cut deep, but cuts painful. New round. Brrp. What have we got here? We've got for Simon eight. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Oh, this is bad. Again, Garrick, who is like just yelling bloody murder right now. Ah, you tried to attack my men. You tried to release criminals from their just desserts. And now you invade my home in the midst of an attack. And he hits him, hits him. This is bad. I think maybe Simon is unable to, uh, to fight this dude because he's so tough. However, he's not that tough. He will miss, thankfully. Simon's round now. He's gonna do a spirit roll to see if he can get up. Get up, Simon. You've got to give up. Not give up, not give up, get up. You know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spend the Benny and come out of shaking uh, immediately because I want, I want to act this round. Now he's in combat. So he is going to drop the bow, pull his sword and attack. Four against his parry of ungodliness. Uh, it's not gonna work. So we go into new round. But before we do, I think there's a very good chance that this whole thing gets interrupted by another creature. Wouldn't that be interesting? Because they're still around and I don't know what's going on with the rest of the, uh, the centipede uh, things in town. So here's the thing, we're gonna call it, mm, it's been a while now. Ooh, let's call it likely That's, that one of these creatures pops out of the hole. Zero one. Oh yes, not one, but two. Bursting from the hole. Okay, this is a problem now. They get their own action card. So Simon is going to be, well, you know, my name is Simon and my initiative card is Jack. Um, uh, 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 Garrick, seven and the creatures are on nine. Okay, so Simon goes first. Well, <laughs> he hacks at Garrick. Urgh! Bang with his mighty D6. He really, he really sucks. He's really not a good fighter. Five, he will not hit. Bang, he, he cannot get past Garrick's parry. <laughs> Too much. Uh, and now it's the creatures. They both are going after Garrick. Well, let's say one to two. One of them goes out. And okay, so they both go after Garrick. And they are going to, one of them is going to just fill the room with sleep gas. So the first one attacks with sleep clouds with a six. So it's not a raise, it's just a, uh, a straight up vigor roll uh, for both these guys. So first of all, Garrick, uh, he, no problem uh, see, with a raise, he's fine. And uh, wouldn't that be funny if Simon went down to this? Yes, no problem as well. Uh, also with a race. So he's fine with that. The other one though, <laughs> comes in with its pincers to attack Garrick. Now Garrick is now flanked, even though the enemies are on different sides. Uh, so he has to split his uh, attention against the two enemies. So that means that the enemies are gonna have a plus one to attack. Fighting D6 and he gets plus one. Oh, there's an explode. Uh, so plus one is nine. His parry is eight. Yeah, but he does hit him. Imagine that. And the pincers are doing a D6 and a D8 against his toughness of six. The damage, nine. Boom, that's gonna shake Garrick. Great, thanks buddy. <laughs> All right, and now it's Garrick. He's gonna spend his spirit roll with his plus two to get up. This guy's way too tough. Uh, six, he succeeds, but not with a raise, so he spends his whole round getting up from that. We go to a new round. Simon, another jack. Garrick on a two. <laughs> and the creatures on a jack of clubs, but hearts go before clubs, so thankfully. He is no longer shaken, but he is going to attack with his sword, but at plus one because of the end. Oh, come on. You know what? I'm spending a Benny to reroll the whole thing because I'm quite sick of this, let me tell you. Come on, stab Garrick, won't you? Six, that's a little better. Plus nine is a regular hit. D6 and D8 damage against uh, toughness of um, six. Okay, come on. 
Six against six will shake him. Ugh. <laughs> good. Garrick's on two. Uh, the creatures, again, I think there's a good chance one of them goes after Simon. One to three, it does. It does not. The creatures pounce on the fallen. Well, he's not the fallen. He, when you're shaking a savage world, that could mean a lot of things. Basically, Garrick is kind of like stumbling against the wall, suffering the, the death of a thousand cuts, as they used to say. So lots of blood everywhere. Uh, <laughs> the two things come in on him and attack. Both of them attacking with D6s. Uh, now, each of them gets a plus two because they're all attacking the same guy. Ooh, exploding. Uh, nine, 10, 11. Eight, one of them gets a regular hit. It's gonna do a D6 and a D8 damage, gets tough to six, and it's going to do, there we go, there we go. That's gonna be 12 plus seven, 19 versus six. <laughs> this is good because Garrick is out of eddies. 19 against six, so six shakes him, 10 wounds him, 14, 18. He's already shaken, oh, he's already shaken. He's already shaken. So that means it turns into, he is incapacitated by that. Oh, that's great. So these things swarm on Garrick and begin to feed on him as their pincers are chaw. I think it's time. Uh, well, Garrick is, is incapacitated and um, I don't think he's gonna make it. However, <laughs> Simon is stuck in this area with these creatures. He's gotta get the hell out of Dodge. Simon, he's on seven. The creatures are on nine. Well, do they continue to feed or do they attack the guy standing? They are pretty, uh, pretty savage and Perilous Wilds said that uh, they were attacking. So um, I'm gonna say it's likely they go after Simon. Uh, Chaos rank five, uh, 43. Yes, one of them, at least one of them does. If it was a very, if it was an extraordinary yes, I would have had both of them uh, abandon their meal. But one of them here immediately launches at Simon and attacks him with a D6 fighting and rolls a two, so he will miss. Simon, so he's gonna move his six and go on the defensive. So he defends himself as he leaps backwards, making a fighting tactical with, uh, withdrawal back through the window. The creature will attack against him. Oh no, six, uh, nine. He's gonna hit him <laughs> as he goes, but not with a raise. Come on, roll low. Seven. Oh, he's gonna shake Simon. <laughs> oh. And you know, my name is Simon, and the card I draw is six. Versus 10, that's no good. This thing attacks him again. Uh, uh, this thing's of course gonna come after Simon. It's now, because this thing is quite busy, busily feeding on Garrick. <laughs> As he's trying desperately to get out of the wall, he will miss this time. Simon does a spirit roll in order to break free of the Shaken. Simon will once again do a fighting withdrawal which will provoke an attack of opportunity as he leaps back through the open window and the thing will miss. He leaps back to the window, which is two, and then he's going to go three, four, five, six. Let's ask the fate chart. Does it pursue Simon or does it take the meal right there? 14. Yes, it does pursue Simon. <laughs> There's no escape for this poor guy. This thing, it leaps down the hole and it's gonna burst forth somewhere out here. I'm just gonna say like uh, um, 2d10 yards away because it moves super fast underground, four yards away. So it basically bursts up there. Bang! So Simon sees this on six. He's going to run. He's trying to get to Mord. Six, great, so he can move 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. Leaps the fence, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 on the other side basically. Uh, the thing doesn't see him, but it is going to pursue. Again, the initiative is Simon on King. It's on King, diamonds before clubs. So he runs up to Mord, and let's see what happened to Mord. Oh my God. Okay, buddy, this is for all the marbles. Seven, so it's a success. He's not dead. He's incapacitated. Whew. Now we need to know if he can get out of here. Simon runs up, Mord, Mord, on your feet, on your feet. Mord's like, ah, ah, he suffered a terrible, terrible wound. So he makes, Mord now makes a second vigor roll. If he makes it, he's the walking wounded and he can get out of here. He doesn't make it. Those who don't make the roll can be moved but risk aggravating their injuries. They must make another vigor roll for each and every hour of movement. Should they fail, they begin to die. So, okay, Mord's in bad shape. It's the old wound, sire. <laughs> But Mort stumbles to his feet. Ah, I can't go on. 
Uh, Simon says, we've got to get out of here now. He grabs Mord and they flee into the night, which brings us to the end of the scene. Uh, centipede creatures attack and kill <laughs> Garrick. Mord is walking wounded. Well, um, that's the end of that scene, scene five. Oh boy. It's such chaos, man. It never goes nicely. Let's update our list here. Chaos Factor definitely goes up to six. That was crazy and totally unexpected. That was really, really not at all what anybody expected. Let's uh, deal with our threads. Take vengeance on the Carpsburg militia. Yeah, I think that thread is definitely closed because Garrick has been eaten alive. And characters, there were no new characters. Yeah, that was a brutal, brutal situation. And it leaves Mord and Simon stumbling through the, the wilderness with Mord taking a, what could be a, a, a mortal wound. Mord, oh, ah -ha. It's really not a laughing matter. Mord is, is about to die. And in, in another hour, he's gonna have to make a vigor check. And if he fails, He's dead. So Simon is going to desperately be trying to get Mord back to a safe place where he can tend to his wounds. Will he be able to do that in time? What will happen on the way? As something always seems to happen on the way for Simon, he can't seem to get anything done. Ugh. I have no idea, and neither do you. But if you tune in next week, and remember to hit like and subscribe, then you will find out just like I will, and at the same time, Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.